thanks. You can be seated today. The story of Christmas. I want you to know you got more Bible in that last segment than you've ever heard at a Christmas Eve service in your entire life. You got it all. You got the prophecies from hundreds of years before Jesus was born. You got the story of Jesus' birth. You got Mary and Joseph. You got the story of Herod. You got how God protected his son. And you got the story of the wise men who came to worship at his feet. The Bible says that they gave three gifts, three gifts to Jesus. They brought gold and they brought frankincense and they brought myrrh. And those three gifts are a little strange. I mean, we can understand gold. In fact, uh, tomorrow, I think hopefully many of you ladies will get something that's gold for Christmas. I hope you do. So we still appreciate that. Frankincense and myrrh are a little bit off our radar, but I just want to look at them with you just for a couple of minutes today. And I want to talk to you this afternoon about the gift that you can bring Jesus on Christmas. The gift that you can bring Jesus on Christmas. These wise men, uh, they were uh, not just intelligent. Uh, they weren't just wise men. They, they were known and they had uh, authority and they were great men in the country where they came from. And they realized that uh, they needed to come and they needed to bring something with them to come to Jesus when they came. They brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And each one of those gifts matters, and it means something. And theologically, there's a big depth to this, but I, I'm, I'm just going to uh, keep it for all of us today. First, they brought gold. The reason they brought gold is that gold is the gift of a king. When you go to visit a king, you would bring gold. Gold is significant. I mean, all of us even know and see that even kings today will have some kind of a crown, and it's made out of gold. Gold speaks of a king. And what it says is that there's authority. See, these guys knew that when they came to worship Jesus, they were coming to worship a king. He wasn't just a baby. He was a king. And he had authority, everybody. He had authority. Because, you see, the Bible says that he is the king of kings. That means of all the kings and of all the thrones and of all the crowns, his is the biggest. His is the most. His is the greatest. They knew they were coming to worship a king, and they understood his authority. Now, all of us understand authority. Andre and I got a reminder about authority just the other day. We were driving on the freeway. We were coming across town, and we got up the on-ramp, and we got onto the freeway, and the traffic was absolutely stopped. It wasn't moving at all. Not even a little bit. Now, how many of you know, nothing tests your Christianity uh, you're laughing because you know what I'm talking about. Like getting on the freeway and nobody's moving. I mean, after all, it's a one-way street, right? We all know where we're going. Push the skinny pedal on the right. Nobody moving. What's happened? What's going on? So after about 15 minutes, we get up to the front of the line, and the entire freeway is stopped because there's a man on the freeway. Why are you on the freeway, sir? You do not belong on the freeway. We have sidewalks, not the freeway. But this man actually did belong on the freeway because he had a badge. One guy with a piece of metal this big stopped the whole freeway because he had the authority to do it. We gave him a badge to signify that authority. In other words, he actually spoke for all of us. He's there to keep all of us safe. One guy stopped all of those cars, stopped all of that traffic because he had the authority to do it. I'm here to tell you this about Jesus. He has all the authority you could ever need. Listen to me. He is the authority. Nobody trumps his authority, and that's what we need to remember today because, listen, many of us have questions, many of us have issues, many of us are dealing with some things. Many of us are dealing with brokenness and sickness and pain and hurt. Some of us don't know what to do and we're confused and we don't know where to go. And here's what I'm here to tell you, that the Bible says this, that that baby born in a manger, Jesus, the name given to him, Jesus is the name that is above every other name. That his name is above cancer, it's above sickness, it's above divorce, his name is above poverty, his name is above confusion, his name is above depression, his name is above anything that you are facing, the name of Jesus is higher. He has the authority. He's the king. Wise men brought a second gift, frankincense. If the gold spoke of Jesus' authority, the frankincense spoke of Jesus' divinity. 
Frankincense was a type of incense and it was used in worship. And so uh, they would burn frankincense and, the, and the, the smell of it was part of the worship experience. Even today, it's still used in some churches in other parts of the world during a worship experience. It signifies divinity. And so not only did they know they were coming to a great king, uh, they realized something else. He's not just a man. We're talking about God here, everybody. Let's just stop for just a moment. Let's back the train up just a second and realize that this story isn't just about a baby that was born in a manger. This is about the almighty, all-creating God who came to earth. He's God. Divinity. Uh, he would be worshipped. Not just here. We will worship him, and today we've stood, we've worshipped him, not only us, there's millions of people all over this world who are worshipping the name of Jesus right now, who are looking forward to the greatest birthday celebration there ever was, which happens tomorrow, who are worshipping him because he's God. Uh, listen, and he really is. They understood that God was showing up on the scene. And can I just tell you, in your world, in your life, in whatever you're going through, God wants to show up for you, and He is God. He's not just another person. You see, He's the one who has the authority, but He also has the power to change your situation. Because He's God. He's the one who spoke and the world came into existence. It started out with just a word. He said, let there be light. And there was light. Light was a word, then it was a reality because it was his word. And that same God can speak a word over your life too. I wonder how many people here tonight need one word from God. Man, we just want God to speak something. We want to realize and remember his divinity, that he is God. This isn't just about an another baby that's born, although that's worth a celebration. This is about God coming into our world. The gold spoke of his Authority, the frankincense spoke of his divinity. Because I understand the authority of God, he has uh, my respect. Same way the officer did who held up the badge and told me to stop. Because I understand the divinity of God, he has my worship. Because he's greater than me. But I want to talk about the third gift. Gold, frankincense, and the third gift was myrrh. Now myrrh is a strange gift to bring. It was valuable, but it was used specifically to embalm bodies that were dead. Myrrh. Why did they bring him myrrh? They brought him gold because of his authority. They brought him frankincense because of his divinity. They brought him myrrh because of his humanity. Because at the moment Jesus was born, he was set on a pathway to die. The manger, which was made out of wood, pointed to a cross, which was made out of wood that he would hang on for you and me. See, Jesus is 100% God, but he's also 100% man. And I want you to see that today because, you see, his authority gets my respect and his divinity gets my worship. But listen, his humanity, that's what lets me have a relationship with him. I, I want you to know that the reason why these guys brought myrrh and they laid it at his feet is because they realized and they knew something, they understood something, and that's this. And he is God, but he's coming into our world. He's showing up here. Why is it that God would take on flesh and become a man and experience things like humidity? Texas heat. August in Texas. Come on now. But he did. And the Bible explains that the reason why. Why did he experience that? Why did he come and be a man? Why, why did he do that? It's because he wanted you to know that right where you are right now, he has been there. You say, man, I don't know if God can understand me. I don't know if Jesus can relate to my life. He doesn't know what it's like to be betrayed. Yes, he does. Absolutely. He was betrayed by his friends. I don't think he can understand what it's like to be lonely. You don't know how lonely I am. Yeah, he knows how lonely you are. He was all by himself alone facing the worst moment of his life. Can God understand the kind of stress I'm under? Can he really realize the weight that's on me? Absolutely. The stress was so great on him that his capillaries burst in his forehead because of the stress. 
He knows your stress. He knows your hurt. He knows your anxiety. He knows your depression. He knows the secrets you don't want to tell anybody. He knows the brokenness in your life and the brokenness in your family. He knows how things didn't turn out the way they were supposed to. He knows what it's like to have a plan and have it all thrown away. He knows what it means to have somebody who's close to you just turn on you completely. He knows. He knows. And I'm here to tell you there's some power in that. In realizing that Christmas is about this. God knows where you are. He hasn't just seen it from far away. He was willing to come down and be in it with you. And he's still willing to come down and be in it with you. God. God. Who has the greatest authority. God who is the most amazing divinity. This God would become a person. Humanity, so that he could say he's walked with us. The Bible says there's nothing that we face that he doesn't understand. No temptation has come upon you but what is normal, what is part of life. And he understands it. He knows, he sees, he realizes right where you are. And the reason I want you to see that is because these wise men brought three gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They signified three things, his authority, his divinity, and his humanity. But it reason me really to the last part of the message, and that's this. What gift can you bring? I want to answer that question. God doesn't need any gold. And you don't need to bring any frankincense. And I doubt anybody here has any myrrh. So if you're going to be a wise man, what do you bring to him? What do you bring to him today? It's his birthday tomorrow. What do you bring? We don't have anything valuable enough to show his real value. We don't have anything great enough to really show his great strength and power. And yet he was the God who became one of us. So what's the gift you can bring? Let me answer the question for you. The gift that you can bring Jesus this Christmas is the gift of you. It's the gift of you. You can come like the wise men came and they brought their gifts and they laid them down before him and you can come and give yourself to him. See, that's the gift that only you can give. God's taken every step toward you but the last one, but he leaves that choice to you. It's a personal choice for you and me to open our hearts to the love of God, to give him all that I am, to give him me. And so a lot of people will give a lot of gifts tomorrow, maybe tonight, depends on your family. By the way, how many of you open presents on Christmas Eve? Raise your hand. Jesus. Yeah, you're very excited. Thank you. I'm going to get you out of here in just a minute, okay? <laughs> Hold on. Right? That, by the way, that's also the people who believe in pre-tribulation rapture, and that's good. Yeah, how many people get do presents on Christmas Day? Raise your hand. You're going to get it, but it's going to be a little later. Okay, that's good. All right. I'm not going further into that, but here's what I want to say. We're going to give a lot of gifts. But the only gift that you can give God is the gift of yourself. And I just want to know today, have you given it? Have you given yourself to him? Have you made that decision? It's a choice we make. And how do we do it? We do it by having a moment where we recognize what he did for us. And we let him start to change our lives. The Bible says that all of us, every single one of us, there's a person in this place who's good enough to get to God. That's the bad news. But God saw that, and when he saw we weren't good enough to get to him, he came to us, and that's what Christmas is all about. Man, it's not about you being good. You can't be good enough. Please be good. I hope you will be good. But you can't be good enough to earn your way to God. And the good news is you don't have to. Jesus came to you and me, and that's what Christmas is all about. God gave us the gift of his son, and now, in this moment, I want to ask you to give him the gift of yourself. Have you opened your heart to Jesus Christ? Because if you haven't, or you're not sure, this is your moment. Now's the time. This is your opportunity to give the greatest gift you'll ever give to God, and that's the gift of you.
I'm gonna ask you across this room to bow your heads. Would you do that? And close your eyes and let's just have a private moment, me and you. This afternoon, if you need to open your heart to the love of God, I wanna help you, that's why I'm here. I'm gonna pray a really simple prayer. I'm gonna lead you in a prayer right there at your seat to open your heart to Jesus Christ. And I want you to think about it. God's done all of this for you. Christmas is about you. It's about God coming to your world. Christmas is about Jesus showing up. Christmas is the setup for God to pay the greatest price for you. You mattered that much to him. Open your heart to him right now. If you need to do that, I'm gonna lead you in a prayer. Before I do, I wanna see who I'm praying with. So I'm gonna ask you while your heads are bowed and eyes are closed and nobody's moving around. If you'd say, you know what? When you pray, pray for me. I wanna be in on that prayer. Then right now, I'd like to ask you to just lift your hand. You can lift it. One, two, three, go ahead. Lift your hand all over this room. If you wanna be in on that prayer, go ahead, lift your hand. There's people all over. There's people all over, go ahead. This is about you, your own personal decision. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give the gift of myself to God. I'm gonna dedicate myself to him. I want him to come and change my life. Lift your hand and hold it up. And the risers, you too, lift your hand, hold it up. Say, I wanna be on this prayer, lift your hand, hold it up. Lift your hand, hold it up. You have one more moment and then we're going to pray. Anybody else need to join these folks? Lift your hand and hold it up. You can put your hands down all over this room. Now right there at your seat, I want you to say this prayer. I'm gonna lead you. Dear Jesus, I come to you. And I believe in you. I believe that you came to earth. I believe you were born as a baby. I believe that you lived a perfect life. And I believe that you died on a cross for me. And I believe that you rose again. Today, I ask you to forgive me of my mess ups and mistakes. The Bible calls those sin. And to change my life, transform me from the inside out. Right now, I'm coming to bring that gift. I'm giving you myself. You gave everything for me. Now I come to give myself to you. God, make me new. I want the Christmas story to intersect my story today. And I want you to take the pen. Write the future of my life and change me. I put my hand in yours and I start today to walk with you. And I know that won't end until I see you face to face. I give you thanks for all you've done, for who you are, for Christmas. Now come and live in my heart. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Now keep your heads bowed, would you? I want to pray one more prayer. Because you can be here today and you've given your life to Christ. But you're facing something where you need the power of God to touch your life. You need a miracle. Christmas is about a miracle. God can work a miracle in you. In your home, in your family, in your finances. Wherever you need him today. If you need God to do something in your life, would you just receive this prayer? For you today Lord I pray for people across this room whatever it is that they're facing today I ask for your power to touch them I declare that you are the great authority you are the king of kings and you're the Lord of Lords and you are the Almighty God and I pray right now that you touch people who are sick and make them well and God that you'd you'd help people who are confused and need to make a decision give them wisdom and and you would repair and heal families and I speak healing to marriages and and sons and daughters and I just ask for your hand to touch people who need you we need a miracle today so I pray that you do that by your power let Christmas let 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 the reality of Christmas the miracle of Christmas bring a miracle in us I give you thanks for that. Let it be in Jesus' name.